personally, I think it's not Gary Neville's position to ask the Premier League to investigate those moves or to sanction those moves or block those moves. Number one, when there were investors coming in for Premier League clubs from the US, from um, Dubai, from Saudi Arabia, right? All those things went through. Mm. Now, they are bringing monies for this player. It's like saying it's fine for you to sell a player to, say, the Russian League. It's fine for you to sell a player to, say, the Finnish League. So why is it any different for you to sell a player to the Saudi League? There's really nothing. And many of these players, there's a lot of interest because we brought up some of these transfer stories. Bernardo Silva, this is a guy who is currently at the peak of his abilities. He's arguably one of the best midfielders in the Premier League, one of the best midfielders in the world. And if he's already turning attention to saying, maybe I should go over to Saudi Arabia, it means he's won everything he can think to win. Maybe it's time to also try something new, right? Hakim Ziyech. That's also a player at the peak of his abilities at this moment. May not have had game time at Chelsea, right? This pass is in but We know what ZH can do. He played very well for Morocco at the FIFA World Cup. And this was just over six months ago. So Saudi is not just throwing money at players because they want to come. They are generally changing their sports industry. They see it as a productive business. Now, I've seen people focus on just football. Beyond football, Saudi has spent money. We mentioned boxing here. We mentioned Formula One here. We mentioned uh, horse racing right here. We've mentioned, uh, what's the name? Um, the golf. I even just, I was reading through yesterday and I remember that even WWE mm. also has a contract with Saudi Arabia to at least host two events every year in Saudi Arabia. So Saudi, it's, it's not just one they're event. They're very strategic yes, because with their sports. They're also saying that they know that the, the race for oil Oil is a very good investment, but they are saying it will not last forever. So all the profits they are making from oil, they want to also invest it in other places to, to expand their limits, or sorry, expand their pool of income. And for me, that's brilliant. So they made a lot of profit last year and the year before. They're taking some of those money, 200 billion. They're putting it into football wow. to start growing. So they bought, the state government bought four of the clubs. They're hoping that the other clubs, private investors will come in to expand the league. That's for football. Anthony Joshua has fought there. Mm. And the Ruiz Jr., heavyweight fight. Now, they're also saying that these four guys who are at the peak of their abilities in terms of Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, and Alexander Yusik, they want to host a fight right there. Sometime this year, next year. They're putting a lot of money everywhere. They've mm. got the biggest horse derby racing. Before, it used to be in the UK, but now Saudi Arabia boasting of it. Mm. WWE is right there. Formula 1. There's always a Formula 1 race on the calendar, I think for the next five years, if I'm correct. And they're already invested in F1, generally as a sponsor. So they're spending, some say sports washing, I don't think so. I think it's an investment to say, you know what, in the next few years, oil will not be the number one thing. Mm. Pilgrimage, as big as it is, that's another source of income. Let's diversify, let's get many angles. So now they're getting, in quote, players who are in the, in the twilight of their career. But as they're reducing the age in terms of bringing younger players, you just realize that the Saudi League all of a sudden becomes a very good league. Yes, it pays. You may not have the sort of history the Premier League has. But I think that generally, if they continue in this state, who knows? Yes, but, next... but could it just be that the reaction was uh, just, uh, I don't want to call it envy, but it was just like, hey, these people are taking so much attention. So let's see what we can do to just dilute that I think attempt so. to migrate to that, that side and keep our league active. You know, because where money is, that's one of the things that made uh, uh, the England, England League stand out mm -hmm. because there was money and everybody you know growing up really then when i used to watch football a bit it was all about ajax and uh and the german clubs that you see on nigerian tvs mm -hmm. and later and the syria just, and the syria yeah. you know yeah you know, I, I remember the uh all the days of the bebetos and mm -hmm. those old timers mm -hmm. yeah so those were the ones we grew up with back then but now it's all about english club and it's all money so maybe they see this and they feel like hey we haven't milked our investment yet let's milk it for another 10, 20 years before you start pumping the same amount of money and take this away from us. Well, you can't tell somebody when to start this plan because this is an economy that they are thinking. Mm. They, so for those who don't know, they've started this plan since 2016, right? The plan is to continue building. Well, in 2023, and the plan is, so this is nine years, what, so, sorry, seven years after. Yeah. And the plan is to continue. Some have said 2030 World Cup. They say by the time they get to 2030 World Cup, they want to ensure that the Saudi national team is well equipped mm. in terms of a potpourri of different football cultures. One, they want to be able to challenge well for international events beyond just the Asian Champions League, beyond mm. the Asian Nations Cup. They want to be able to say at the World Cup, 
they too can cost a lot of surprise. And I think they have every right to dream. Because look, if you've got money, you've got plan, you've what got investment. The do? same thing we said about England, Spain. It's half of the things Saudi is doing. Nigeria can do half of it. Half. We're talking about our infrastructures. Imagine mm. if we can build some of the best stadiums and we can get some of the biggest football stars to play in those stadiums. Come play on. Mm. I, like I said, it's just how I see it and I think it's a good What if plan. we just organize uh, a homecoming for all our uh, uh, professionals once a year? Just come play you know, one homecoming match with the local guys. And this is why we always leave you in politics. Because you know, like, politics, I only ask the question. We're always thinking 100% <laughs> in politics. No, I only ask the question. When it comes to sports, we're not having us to be doing corner corner for our own. I'm only asking you a question. I think that it's not... No, so we have a lot of international footballers coming yeah. to the country. They are organizing um, pre-season tournaments, international friendly tournaments. Mm. But to get that your idea, it has not been done. Doesn't mean it's not possible. I think it's a good idea that, who knows, someone can exploit it in terms of investment sponsorship and yeah. all doesn't look like a bad idea after all mm. um i also want to point out the story you took about the tennis um getting ai mm. you know ai has changed a lot especially this year there's been a lot of things that ai has just ai can help you write a story mm -hmm. AI can help you write a script ai can even you can use ai to voice another person's song and you won't even know somebody else sang the song yeah. so now to get ai commentaries it just tells you that the world is really spinning technology is going forward that at some point maybe humans may not be needed to do anything anymore yeah that was scary when i heard that i was like okay does it mean i can get ai to do my show for me if i'm not in the studio <laughs> that would be we would prefer ai to you actually because <laughs> ai what, ai will not mention what else name. do i expect ai will not go <laughs> what, i i what, what else I, do i expect from family, I, family? of course I, because every day you do you prefer I, you prefer ai to me i i at least i got to do it's not done too many but, I, but it's i it's ai no, there's uh, A in front. Uh, and but it's I, I when you... No, you, know. you your own is only I. Uh, I, Ulua uh, Kayodi. I, Ulua Kayodi. <laughs> come on. Come <laughs> on. Goodness. But it's going to be a brilliant thing if it does. I like to see how it works. As mm. a matter of fact, I will follow up because I want to see how they go what about it. Mm. I have um, I listened to the to the commentaries for the French Open, the Grand Slam. Okay. And putting that at the back of my head, because that's the last Grand Slam we had. And now we're going to another Grand Slam. I like to see what the difference is. It's not for the main events. It's more like it's for the reviews. Yeah. And, and all, on the app. Yeah, on the, the app. Yeah. So I'm going to like to see how it goes mm. in terms of, because that's the start. Once you start off with this. Within a short while, you can do away with some more people. But I'm just wondering, how, how are we going to frustrate this AI from displacing us? Because it's, it's going into so many areas. Now sports. You might get terminated. <laughs> <laughs> and not watch me, guys. You come and remove it. <laughs> because look, it's scary. To be honest, it's very scary. It's very, very scary, because it means now that essays that you'd spend hours writing, mm. putting thoughts into it, uh, thinking about experiences to jot down. Now AI just writes all yeah. those things for you. Yeah, he's thinking, he's reading moods because that's what you do when you're running commentary. Oh, what, you know, you're exactly. reading moods, <sighs> reading the actions, reading the moods and the moves <sighs> and everything. And this this thing is not physical. I mean, I, I don't know if you, I can't. Are you sure that thing is technology though? It's technology. It is. Are you sure it's strictly technology, or it is you know, or African technology? No, 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 no. It's just it's technology. African technology. I think that, that that's practically what AI is trying to do in terms of. We've seen a lot of improvement in terms of sports. Mm. Um, for tennis, they had Hawkeye. Right? That's where it started. Okay. Um, now you're trying to do a little more in terms of bringing more technology to the sports. Mm. Football too has had a semi-automated um, offside. We saw at the FIFA World Cup. Mm. So they're trying to bring different ideas, new ideas. I don't think it's bad, personally. Mm. I just think it's about human evolving. In science, we just need to evolve. Because we talk about sports and science. This is part of science. Humans must evolve, move forward, and not understand this is your rule. What I don't think that AI can do is the experience. AI cannot do the experience. It may try to read non-verbal communications, yeah. your mood, what your hand is doing, mm -hmm. what your facial expressions are, but it cannot talk about the experience. Say, it doesn't happens. have feeling. Yes. That are you sure that can be built no, into no, it? No, because, no, I think it's going to be... Yeah. Yeah, because that's what I was talking about when I said that you're reading the moods, you're going to describe it the way it feels, let people, you know, like Not you're possible. sensing it yourself. No, I don't think it's possible. There could be some possible. sensory, you know, stuff that will be put out there to capture all that no, as well. No, AI cannot. So, I remember having once asking AI about certain things concerning experience, right? Mm -hmm. And it go, and the answer it told me was, 
it cannot write on experiences because it doesn't know what I have experienced in my life. Mm. Especially things that are not on social media. Okay. So it cannot just go on the internet and pick stuff. But I didn't put it there. It's not on the internet. So if a tennis player, say for example, um, let's say Venus Williams. Right? Venus Williams is going to go on to play a game. Mm. Now, Venus Williams may have had... It may be that after every game, she does... Ha! Yeah. It's reading the ha to mean pain. Meanwhile, it may not be what is maybe it may be a charge. Yeah. Like ah, everybody get on board. Ah, like I'm shouting. Yeah. Everybody, come on, come on, give me that to sort drive of drive the, the support. It will read really different. So I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work long term, but I, I think in the short term it may this, not. This is the beginning. Let's see how it goes. But hmm, I've said my own. Only really you'll be by yourself. <laughs> uh, so let's go through some of the stories from the transfer world because there are quite a lot of stories coming through, and I think that for next season we would have. Maybe with the exception of Real Madrid, because I'm not very sure what Madrid are doing for now. So I'm just going to leave Real Madrid out of my conversation. But what I'm seeing in the Premier League in terms of players making moves is absolutely brilliant. Now I'm saying brilliant because the transfer story is buzzing. Now we know Chelsea must sell before the end of June. And so Chelsea has started selling already. And for people who thought that oh Chelsea was only going to sell to Saudi clubs because that's the best way for them to raise money. They're selling Harvest to Arsenal for £65 million. So he tells you that even Arsenal know the value of this player. I've heard a lot of Arsenal fans complain. But I'm like, look, you're judging Havertz on what you have seen in the Premier League. It's the same thing I said about Havertz, um, Haaland. I saw Haaland play in the Bundesliga. I watched the Bundesliga. And the Haaland I saw in the Bundesliga and the Haaland in the Premier League are mm. two different players. They're playing two different styles of football okay. based on the coach's instruction. Now, the same thing for Havertz. Havertz was practically a player who could act as a 10 an eight, a nine mm. in the Bundesliga, and he was everywhere for Bayer Leverkusen. He comes to the Premier League for Chelsea and then seems like a different player. And because the Premier League relies a lot on stats, it's very difficult to back some of what Havertz has done with stats because once they say, oh, how many goals has he scored? How many assists does he have? Mm. How many is this? How many? But beyond all of that, if you look at what he contributes to the team, generally, on and off the ball, I think it's good. And Arsenal will benefit from it because... Arsenal will need a player who can also contribute in terms of goals in the absence of their number nine, Gabriel Jesus. They will need a player who can play the Odegaard role when Odegaard is not available. I think except the manager wants to change his style of play, he cannot play the Granit Xhaka role because Xhaka role is a lot more deeper. They will need a different midfielder for that kind of guy. £65 million, I think is good for both parties. He's a footballer who's in his mid-20s. Arsenal give him a long-term contract, say six years. And in that six years, use him well. I think it'll be good. May not be a starter for Arsenal mm, because okay. Arsenal's team is already pinned down in terms of who will start. But I think he's that kind of player who, you know, he comes off the bench or as Arsenal go for the Champions League, he's that sort of player that will contribute. You get Arsenal already proposed to getting him, getting Timber. There's a defender for my axe. Uh, right? Get Timber in. He's also that sort of player who can give Arsenal cover on the right of defence, central defence. Because last season, that was one of the problems I thought Arsenal had. You have a good team. There's a lot of fighting spirits. There's a manager who is knowledgeable about the game, who understands tactics. Now, I thought that he made a few of the starting 11 players look better than they really were. Gabriel Megales, for example. I always felt that, you know what it was? I thought Saliba held that defence a lot harder or a lot tighter than he did. And immediately, this guy went off. Automatically, it was this other fellow who stepped up. Right? But... When you look at Arsenal towards the end of last season, defensively they were a mess. And that was what, for me, cost them the title. So for next year, if you get a defender, that's good. You get Declan Rice, for example. So all those on their pricing rise for 90 million. Or, at the end of the day, you will pay. It's English. Mm. Harry Kane, we won year. Spurs are pricing him for 100 million. That's what they put the price tag on. Chelsea are putting 70 million for Mason Mount. He has one year left on his contract. The minute next season starts... And January hits. Mm. You can talk to this player and get a cut prize if you want to make him move by January transfer window. So it's just the prizes for English players, which I think is a lot of money, by the way. But hey, look, if Arsenal can get this player, I think they will be better contenders. For me, until Liverpool start doing different transfers, I think they will be in a better position to compete next season for the mm. Premier League title, even better than Liverpool. I see. Because mm. Liverpool have already signed Gabriel McAllister, right? And he's a good footballer. He's a very good footballer. But I still think that Liverpool have not finished off in terms of who becomes the front three for next year. Salah, obviously. 
What's going to happen to Darwin Nunez? Nunez this year had his purple patch. Yes, he had his period when he was good. But for the most part, Nunez didn't look like he was going to be that player to bail Liverpool out. Now, Luis Diaz was injured. Uh, Jota came in and out, in and out of the team. They didn't have that permanent three that they always want to have. And in midfield, now they've brought in Trent into midfield. McAllister into midfield. They need to still get, for me, an extra midfielder, someone who is young and active, and maybe an extra defender for next season. That's my thoughts for Liverpool. Because I've seen Van Dijk play. Recently, Van Dijk has not looked like his old self. I still saw the Nations League semi-final and final. And that just tells me that Liverpool have got a lot of problems defensively. In seasons where Van Dijk's performance drops, Konate is out injured, who are they turning to? Because Trent is not the greatest defender. So for Liverpool, that's for me still maybe the question. Chelsea, I don't know. Chelsea have done a lot of business. They've sold a lot of players. Mm. As one of the names Chelsea has said, I'm even like, guys, take it easy. Right, you saw Kovacic. I thought Kovacic, I would have preferred Kovacic to stay at Chelsea if I were the Chelsea board. But Man City has gotten a price gem. Like they've gotten a player who will even make the team a lot better. Missing Gundogan is bad. But I think Kovacic would obviously close some of those things in terms of what he brings to the team. So in a hierarchy of things, I think City will be at the top based on what I have seen. Okay. In the transfer, City will be at the top. I still push Arsenal to second. United has not done anything. And United's own Wala is complicated. I wish Diego was here. It would have been easier to explain <laughs> United's Wala. But United's own is it's so confusing because, number one, they're trying to sell the club. Mm. This thing takes a long process. It can take as much as six months. And in that space, a lot of activities cannot be done. And United currently are trying to manage funds in terms of prioritizing what they need. So what they're saying now they want is Mason Mount. A midfielder because a midfield last season they suffered a lot in terms of options. Um, what's his name played a lot? Bruno Fernandes played a lot of football games. But what they need now for this season is number one, a striker. Mm. And United have not still identified a striker that they're going to go for. They went for Kane, but when they had 100 million, they ran away. I don't think Kane for 100 million, knowing how English players are priced, is bad. If you get a player who can deliver for you at least 20 goals in the next consistently three seasons, because Kane. The last five years has been very consistent. Okay. He's been scoring on the average, on the average, say about 20 a season for the last five years. That's a footballer who is very consistent. And currently he's going to be 30 this year. Right? So a player like that, with that sort of experience, we are playing in the Champions League. What he adds is val as in valuable, top, top player, one of the best forwards in the world. You get that kind of player in, you get Mount, right? Yes. Maybe you find a way to sell some other names. Because United must also raise funds. I think the fact that you want to buy, you must raise. Chelsea are buying and selling. And selling at the same time. You have to buy and sell at the same time. So all those players you want to move out, the likes of Eric Bailly, Harry Maguire, mm. um, you need to start saying, okay, they're right in front of the show glass. Who wants these guys? How much are we going to get on these guys? If you don't sell these guys, you will make the management feel, we've got these guys. You need to offload these so guys why are first. You adding more to it? Because Arsenal, for example, are going to sell. Pate is currently wanted in Saudi Arabia. There's interest in Europe for Pate. There's interest for Granit Xhaka. Bayer Leverkusen wants him in Germany. Xabi Alonso has had a conversation with him. So all those kind of names. Arsenal want to get Lavia, Romeo Lavia of Southampton. Now, that player was scouted by Pep Guardiola himself. They went for a preseason tournament. I think it, they brought in a tournament. Saw the player, brought him to City. Liked what he did, but couldn't fit him into his midfield because he's got likes of Gundogan, Rodri, Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne. There was no way that guy could play. So City let him go to Southampton with a buyback option. Now, so far, City have not really moved for all their signings in terms of they want to see their outgoings to know what to do. So you can understand Pep's delay. But I think that United need to move now. Identify the guys you want. Because Julian has almost finished. Mm. So practically, we have only the month of July. And if United want to be contenders, they need to do that. So, yeah. you know, those are the small, small things from the transfer world that we cannot deny that we need to see. Maybe we should take messages. I don't talk plenty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So let's try to read some of your messages right now, right? Um, okay. This one says, um, I'm not, okay, you are overrating team by a player that didn't start for Netherlands. I think he will flop in the Premier League. Um, nice what you're doing, Biodo from Ilupeju. Now, before before I leave, the, the Timber story, just to 
to say something on Tiva's story. What Ateta is trying to do is add more options for Arsenal. We already know Saliba is Arsenal's best central defender. Megales, obviously, he's brought in Kiwia, right? He's played White as a right back. Now, the con- challenge about right as a right back is that even White himself has not played and convinced a lot of people because in the national team, for example, he's not a starter. I think he wants to have more options. Last season, the reason why Arsenal collapsed was because they didn't have options. And options that could come off the bench like City and still play almost as good as those guys in the first eleven. So that's what I think he's trying to do. Bring in more options. Give themselves options. Havertz is an option. Havertz may not start because most likely it will be Odegaard or it will be Jesus. But you're giving yourself more options that, oh, okay, Moussa Diaby. Arsenal has been linked with Moussa Diaby or Bayer Leverkusen. Diaby plays as a right winger. And at the moment, Arsenal have Saka. Nobody can display Saka. It's one of the best England products. But they are giving themselves more options because that's how City won the title. City had more options whenever injuries or lack of form hit one player. There was a period Myers wasn't playing. Folding wasn't playing. But then somebody else stepped up. De Bruyne, there was even a period where De Bruyne was dropped. Somebody will step up and play those games. So that's what I think Timber brings. And if Ten Hag chased that player for a while, it means Ten Hag, who coached the player, knows there's something that about that player could do. Uh, Babalola Abdul Gaffaro, let's take this one more message before we go for a break. Says, I uh, thought Uncle Charles was scheduled to call in for an update on the event of the Federation Cup yesterday. Uh, with this form, I hope Chelsea will not let go of the destiny share of the players leaving. Um, Kai to us now for that huge amount. This one pass subsidies come. Babalola Abdul Gaffaro. Mm-hmm. Let's go for a break. We'll come back. We'll talk a little more about some of these things and the FA Cup. Okay, welcome back to Sports Zone on Lagos Talks 91.3. We've got your messages lined out. We'll take a few phone calls if time would permit us as well before the end of the show. We'll also share some more stories with you coming through from the Nigerian sports scene. Now, for those asking about the Federation Cup, we intentionally skipped it today. So, we'll have a full well review when Charles returns from Asaba. Tell her what he saw on and off the pitch Generally, he's already told you how the situation was like in Asaba. So, I'll be looking for the good stories this time in terms of the football game we saw on TV, right? And maybe things that happened well, behind the scene, behind the cameras in Asaba yesterday for both the men's final and the women's final. So, we'll touch on all of that tomorrow, uh, hopefully. Uh, but there's, there's also to just mention as well, this comes from Handball, right? Uh, there are plans already in place for the new season. That's the Handball Premier League we gather the Federation have got a new sponsor. So they'll be talking a lot more about that later today. Uh, 2 p.m., that's when the story should be out. So we'll save you the updates tomorrow morning concerning what the Handball Federation is doing in terms of promoting not just the national team, but also the league as well. So, yeah, we'll come through to that. Uh, let's take a couple of phone calls right now. Okay, so let's switch over. We'll start off with this one. Hello, good morning. Uh oh. Okay. Kyle, try to call back. All right. Try to call back. Let's go to this. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Femi. Good morning, Chief. How are you? I'm very well, and you? I'm very good. That's good. I'm all right. I'm, I'm um, riding. Hello. Go on. I can hear you. Go on. I am excited at what is happening uh, in my club. Uh, talking about Chelsea uh, FC. Many of them initially when they go to the club started well. And after there's a few who conspired against uh, our former owner and the man was forced out. Uh, due to political reasons, everything tumbled. But to the glory of God, like some of us have suggested, as a way forward for Chelsea, we needed a purge. A purge. And we are seeing that now. Let them go. Let them go and explore elsewhere. By the time we, we have a new manager now, 
let him arrange his team that will give him the results. He's not a stranger. Apparently, he had understudied these uh, players. <clears throat> Just one of them gives me pain that is leaving, and that is Kante. Harvard and the likes of them, can, they should go and go and go. Let them go to Man U if you <laughs> like. <laughs> Let Harvard go to Man U if he <laughs> likes. I, it's fine with me. The only person that I, I am not very comfortable living is Kante, a very dedicated African player who has done well with the team. Otherwise, man, Chelsea almost frustrated people like me. Hopefully, next season will, will be better. Next season with the new players and those of them living. All right, then. Good morning. Thank you very much, Chief. Hopefully, next season will be better for Chelsea. All right, let's go over to this. Hello, good morning. Howdy, how are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you. So, uh, basically, I'll start by saying that, like, I actually liked your analysis of Avat going to Arsenal. Like, I think it suits Arsenal very well. And um, the truth is, like, I would, I would, I would have preferred him stay than um, Kovacic because Kovacic, majorly, is just more of a ball carrier. doesn't really contribute goals and assists to the team. So, Avat will have, like, been very suited to... Um, Chelsea style of play, but at least, and uh, but now we are selling him and we are getting almost what we bought him for, so it is like a very good um, thing. So I saw a report yesterday that um, um, Alex Song, the former Barcelona player, is coming to uh, Imba is trying to sign him, and I'm just, just trying to ask, like, to know is, is that true? I'll try to confirm it for it. you. I'll come, I'll try I, to I confirm it on the MPFL page that Alex Song is coming to Imba. I'll confirm so the story. True, that, that would be a welcome development to our national team because that's all, all what we want. We want to project um, our national, um, our Nigerian professional league to the world. At least it, um, it, uh, it would encourage other other teams, just like the Saudis to have mm-hmm. players into their, into their own team, you know, like into their own um, league. Yeah. Because initially, when Ronaldo said, though, like in two years or in three years, that the Saudi league was going to um, become big, a lot of us were laughing at it but now you could see that they're even buying players even now they're they're, they're like they're, uh, they've they gone for Ben Neves now they're talking they're having discussion with Bernardo Silva and I think he might end there like I I think possible so, very possible yeah yeah because like I think uh, like he is having a discussion and listen so it's really of uh, so with um, Alex Song coming to our league to while well, we are talking about Saudi, Saudi league, let's talk about our own league so I hope like we'll be able to like see um, influx of good players coming into the league and a um, good one for Ben insurance, insurance won yesterday right? oh yes they did one goal to nail over Rangers good, good, good. yeah good one for them and good one for the ladies team so um, Rivers United I was just listening to the, the commentary I couldn't follow it because I Bielsa won 4-2 on, on penalties uh, okay Bielsa, Bielsa so good one for them too so I hope like um, we can improve from from all this and I was, uh, I was on Kishore Good please do send my regards to him I will yeah, sure I will uh, yeah so and um, all right. Mr. Charles no problem. And, uh, and again, please, um, I made a complaint about um, the official website. It's not been going. I like, have been making complaints. It's been hard getting to you guys because majorly I go on the website to load it. Either probably you can go, maybe you should always have like a YouTube stream that we can be watching it live on YouTube or maybe your Facebook page. Okay. Um, that's Lagos Talk Facebook page. We could stream the um, the, the uh, show. Zone there. At least yeah. give us access for we that we are outside. It's not really easy using like a third party app because sometimes the feed is always very slow. I'm, I'm sure, like, probably you are like nine, nine o'clock. Um, like this is 857 years. Oh, yeah, but oh, it's 857. Yeah. GMT is currently tied. Slow, very, very slow. Yeah, like, all right, like you're already in 857, and I'm hearing like your what you have said in 850. So it's okay. always very slow. But I just all right, need you guys to work on it. Thank, Thank you very, very much, Kyrie. Well Thank you. Yeah, uh, so what we'll try to do on our own part is also, uh, maybe stream it on, we'll try to stream it on, um. Instagram. All right, let's try. Let's take another call. Hello. Hello, family. Good morning. Good morning. I took a long time on that last call. Though. Sorry, it was it's you know, plenty complaint. I'm really sorry. We're just listing the complaints now. My name is Thomas. I'm calling from Ibafo. Thomas, nice to have you on the show this morning. Let's get your thoughts. Yes, um, that was a complaint now yesterday. Rangers and Shalan. Honestly, I felt so bad being a Rangers fan. This, this must be the worst Rangers team I've ever seen in my life. I've been supporting Rangers since 1975. Wow. 
tell me what I saw yesterday was painful to say the least. Did you watch the game? No, I did not see the game. Oh my god. You remember the conversation that we had the last time? <laughs> that was <laughs> That conversation, yes. the Aimba game we saw the last time. It, 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 no, no, no. This one, this in, insurance. At least we are trying to play something looking like uh, football. But what Rangers do on the field? Though they play the ten men. In fact, when they actually played ten men in the second half, they were they were even better. What's your what What's your thoughts? The, should they let the manager go? Because for the last two years, Rangers really haven't punched above their weight. Should let the manager go, I beg. I beg. I beg. I beg. Well, it is. I don't think get players to play good players. Rangers is an institution, right? And in this issue of Alex Song coming to remember, Alex Song is thirty six now. <laughs> what is he coming to do? All right. Uh, Thank you very much. Okay. Have a nice day. You too. Another call. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Sammy. Good morning. Sebastian, it's nice to have you this morning. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're very good. We're, we're okay. How you? You see, Madini has an award. I was surprised, really. I never believed insurance was going to win that game. Madini has an award. I thought we just... It's a percentage. Yeah. The score won't go. Forget it. Is done. Rangers had enough time, Sebastian, to rest. So they, I thought Rangers should just win it. No, but the Diaz and I will need to win now. Eh? Wow. They've done well, at least over the course of the season. At least let them go to the continent too, you know. <laughs> the, and uh, as for AI, it's, it's voodoo. Or you know voodoo. That's <laughs> AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's lovely, lovely morning. You too. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, let me read a few messages uh, very quickly. On Twitter, Bello Monsuro Mowe says, Good morning, guys. I believe it's going to be a mistake if Chelsea allow Mount to go to United. And congratulations to Bendel Insurance for winning the FA Cup. Uh, we've got more of your messages right here on Sports Zone. right? This one says, um, okay, okay, I'll try to load this one and play it. Uh, that's the message from Jamu. I'll try to load it and play Okay, this one, Aisha Tilala says, uh, Sports Zone family, those people should leave Saudi Arabia alone. It is pure envy. Not suffering and Gary Neville complaining about how the Saudis are spending money to grow their sports. We've got Sanchez from Ibadan who says, um, the Premier League guys just realized that Saudi League is not China League as they have the funds to sustain the intensity for so many years. Young players will start going to Saudi Arabia for the money which will make the perspective to change money over laurels. Threats to the Premier League. Uh, let's head back to calls. Okay, we've got this. Good Hello, good morning. Yeah, Chooks up here on the line. Hey, Chooks, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Kyle. Good morning. Um, one thing I wanted to comment about is, uh, Gary Neville's call for investigating into the Saudi trading. I don't think it's something that should just be dismissed because we can see that the Saudi PIF is a huge investor in a company that has 60% of Chelsea. And a lot of Chelsea players are going to Saudi Arabia. So it could be something going on there you can't be buying players from a club that you indirectly own for ludicrous amounts that could be a way to raise money for chelsea to then go ahead and buy the kind of players and so it's something that should be investigated so i think gary nevis saying that should be looked into is not from a place of um hate or before just to ensure that there's still integrity in the league and then the news of Alex Song coming to Yimba is quite surprising, and honestly, I don't know how to take it. I know um, some of the caller said he's 36 and all of that, but I think it's a good thing that we can actually attract that kind of player, regardless of how old he is. I think it's a good step in the right direction for the MPFF. Uh, great job you guys are doing. Uh, have a great day. All right, thank you very much. I know that I know that Alex Song was playing on the African scene. One country I can't remember the name. I had to do my research, but he was playing on the African continent. I think he was player coach at some point. We'll bring more stories coming through from it. Uh, thank you very much, Karade from Suruleri, for your message. It says it's awkward having just my view without any other contrasting yeah. view, which is fine. It was for once today. No, I was going to. I was actually going to leave you to have an overflow, like the, your nine thirty. 
since you like to steal the show when everybody is around, you're alone today. Do your show. No, so normally, the you know how normally the ego and I will have a few, bush, 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 right? And but this time there's no the ego to bush, 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 bush. yes, I know. There's no this. So you're solo, you're flying yeah, solo good. today. Let's mm. take one more call. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Femi. Good morning. Finally came through. This is Remy. Remy, how are you? I have come today. My brother. Ah, my brother. <laughs> Don't worry. You, you, you're going to get free, my man. Kyrie will never give it to me. It's not this kind of deal. Never. <laughs> you see, uh, I'm surprised that people are, are, are shocked at the um, role of AI to, in our today's world. I mean, AI has been around for long. Actually, AI was first conceived around the early 40s. I even know a man who did his first degree in AI in 1979. Now, I don't think AI is, is coming to take the place of human beings, although I sincerely believe that AI would do better than some of our sport administrators in Nigeria. <laughs> I'm, I'm, looking for, I'm, looking to, I'm looking forward to what will happen with this te type of technology at Wimbledon. It's going to be experimental, of course, as, as stated. But I think um, African leaders, Nigerian uh, sport administrators, are they also thinking about how they can take advantage of this technology? And also, a lot of people in the Western world, they think of future. They are futuristic. Are these people futuristic about what the state of Nigerian sport would be? In the next 50 years, maybe I'm asking for too much. Odaro. You're asking for too much. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're asking for too much. 50 years, okay. We've not done, we've not done five years. <laughs> We're talking about 50 years. Uh, let me just read a few of your messages before we go because time is fast spent for us. Um, this one says, uh, Bayo Ogunshola says, I learned about the Challenge Cup result this morning. Media did a bad job about advertising it. Uh, but even the owners of the organization or the, the event, NFF. And also the sponsors, Dingo, did a very bad job. But that's a story for another day. Uh, Emmanuel from Ijibo says, I think Havertz to Arsenal is a shrewd signing. Still waiting for Manchester United to sign Mount Cham. Uh, we've also got this uh, Olumide from my papa who says, Good morning, Sports Zone. As an Arsenal fan, I'm not excited about this Havertz deal at all. One thing I do is trust Ateta. So I hope he knows what the guy can offer. But for Chelsea, I'm wondering what their plan is for next season. I hope they don't start an early relegation battle. Uh, let's also squeeze this last one through. Uh, Shagun from Ontario says, whoever acquires Maguire must perspire to aspire regards. At the moment, Maguire hasn't had any offer on the table. Right? There are stories about um, West Ham, I remember. Sorry, Aston Villa and Tottenham Hotspur. But so far, nothing concrete has happened. So he remains a Manchester United player and captain going into the new season. On that note, we say uh, Sports Zone will be back tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get the guys in right to get the thoughts concerning the FA Cup. We saved that one for the weekend. So, Charles will tell us what his experience was like based on what he saw and the dignitaries that attended that Federation Cup final. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning, 8 a.m.